Taurus, welcome to your December 2017 tarot video. I'm Gemstone Tarot. This is a love and a general reading for Taurus, Sun, Moon and Rising. Thank you Taurus for liking, sharing and subscribing and do check out the weekly video which is up at the moment. That is for 25th of November to 5th of December. No, 25th of November to the 2nd of December. Taurus, Mercury's about to go retrograde. Can I apologise in advance? Thank you very much. <laughs> if you want a private reading, Taurus, or you want to donate to the channel, all the details are in the description box, or you can visit my website, gemstonetarot.com. Valentine is joining us, and if you can see her, she is the black blob at the back. Just settle down nicely for a bit of a tarot reading. So, Taurus, what is in store? I remember your weekly reading this week, and it's certainly worth a watch. Ooh, let's see. Wow, okay. I think everybody this month, Taurus, is going to get quite a lot of Major Arcana. We've got three things. In October, Jupiter moved into Scorpio. Ooh. And on the 3rd of December, which is this month that we're talking about, we have two issues. <laughs> I call them issues. Okay, we've got a full moon in Gemini, which is a super moon. So it's kind of uber going to resonate. And then we've also got Mercury going retrograde. Would you know it on the same day? So there's quite a lot to contend with. Just trying to see that colours for you. To oh, <laughs> Taurus. I just thought, because normally I, I look at the bottom of the deck. And for you, I said, no, we're going to cut the deck in half and pull out the devil. <laughs> Woohoo! Right, okay. If you have any Aries, uh, Moon Rising, Venus, whatever, I've just done Aries. They also got the devil. They also got a couple of your other cards. So, yeah. I have a feeling though that this message will be quite resonant for all signs in the end because of what's going on. So, Taurus. December. Five of Swords in reverse. I like this for you, Taurus. For me, this is the end of a power struggle. Again, Aries did have a similar message. This is something that has sapped your strength or will make you feel less than. For some of you, this can be to do with, it's, I mean, it's equally split for me, actually. For some people, this will be work, life. For others, this is a love situation. Now, you are releasing something in December. With Gemini full moon, there is a tendency for unspoken things to be blabbed. It's a blab. It's a blabby full moon where things want to be like blab, 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 blab. Secrets coming out, people popping up because of the retrograde and just blabbing, which is a good thing. People who previously might have kept things to themselves start coming out with stuff. But at the same time, Mercury is retrograde. So while there is all that force, and also Jupiter and Scorpio, death, taxes, power struggles, reappraisal of who holds the power, why? You know, it's not enough once Jupiter's gone into Scorpio, philosophical, thoughtful Jupiter goes into deep, inquiring, private detective, stop at nothing, get down to the bottom of it, Scorpio, you find that you really, really dig deep on things. So it's not enough for someone to say, whereas it previously was, do this because I said so, do this because I'm more powerful than you. Once Jupiter moves into Scorpio, corporations, governments and individuals start asking the Eternal, why should I? As in, what gives you the authority? That's what I see here. 
Now that can apply in a romantic relationship, it can apply in a work, it can apply in both, it can be family, but either way, in the middle of the reading, Taurus, Nine of Pentacles, or as I like to call it, Conchita from Eurovision, if you can remember back a few years ago, yeah, a perfect likeness, isn't it? Nine of Pentacles is a great Taurian card. It is becoming self-sufficient in love and in money manifestation. If you are single, it's starting to enjoy it. If you are coupled and you want to be single, you find the strength to do that. If you are just you, single, coupled, don't even think about that sort of thing, this is to do with running your own show. This is to do with producing your own money, grapes on the vine, all being good in the garden. It's a sensual card, it's nice food, it's good things, it's comfort, luxury, feeling nice. I like it. For those of you who are starting businesses, running businesses, very, very good. If you were held to ransom by creditors or anybody really, just people throwing their weight around, I feel that's going to reverse. Five of Swords in reverse. Power imbalances addressed during December. This is nice because it sets it up for 2018 and we like that. Now, thinking of the business side of it, we have two great cards that go with that Nine of Pentacles. We have the Two of Wands and the Three. Yeehaw! Jason setting out on his quest to get back the Golden Fleece with his Argonauts here. Chiron the Wounded Healer is in the cave, which is great for you because he's also the Hierophant, which is your card in this deck. So you're there and you're there, inside and out, okay? Now Jason stakes his claim. He's putting his two, two wands down, boom, boom, like two flags on Everest. I've arrived and I'm on a quest. This is you, Taurus. You've arrived. Then the three. Three is when the two kind of multiplies and action starts happening. Jason, first of all, goes to find this king here who stole his birthright and his crown. And he demands it back. And he gets it. That's what I mean, power imbalance. If someone has been yanking your chain, Taurus, you're gonna yank back and you're gonna win. And that's nice, because actually you've had, not rough readings for a while, but you've certainly had very eventful readings from me for a while, so I'm glad to see that coming to you. Now, the warning card, that devil. In this deck, this is Pan. Pan kind of rampaged around the forest with his horn of plenty. There is a sexual element to this. There is a masochistic element to this. And it kind of is a warning to you that for me, I'm sensing, and this is weird, Taurus, and this won't be for everybody. And I've got the sun shining on me like a spotlight out here. For some of you, there's a touch of Stockholm Syndrome. Now, Stockholm Syndrome, put very, very roughly, and it's more sophisticated than this, is when, uh, what are they called? <laughs> oh, hostages, that's it. People are taken hostage. They spend time with their captors. You know, maybe they're bound and gagged and stuck on the floor, whatever it is, and they form a bond with them. Now, there's no judgment on that. It's just a bond of sorts. But they somehow feel they have experienced something together. And it is a strange, misplaced loyalty, I suppose, although it doesn't feel that way, to the captor. Sometimes they're reluctant to leave the captor, even when they're freed, or they still feel like they might go back if they asked. That kind of strange masochistic sentiment and that is involved when the devil is at play whoever it is that has power over you 
you have every opportunity to reverse it and to win. But at the same time, there is going to be a devilish temptation to go back to when you were being told what to do. Because sometimes being told what to do is horrible but comforting because you know where you are and you don't have to take a leap and you know what the pecking order is. You know, it's like a master and servant type vibe. Now, what's going to happen in December with this full moon in Gemini coming is the blabbing, the information, you can't hide stuff anymore, denial doesn't work, secrecy is blown open, Scorpio plums the depths of things. December is a fairly volatile month, but for you, it's unearthing things. And it's giving you the strength as well, which you didn't have to rebalance this power struggle and move into 2018, just like Aries, actually, with not a clean sheet, because who gets a clean sheet just because it's a new year? It's not a clean sheet, but it's all the wiser. All you need to do, Taurus, is resist this temptation to be drawn back in. Now, for some of you, this is about a relationship. For some of you that are coupled, there are issues that have been resolved. You don't want to be drawn back into them. For others, you've worked hard to keep it on the straight and narrow. For others of you, there are people who had power over you that you've left behind that may tug. You know, it's holiday season, it's December, it's Mercury retrograde. There's people that come home, there's people that travel one way or another, you know, where you see them, you haven't seen them all year, maybe for some time, and they pop up again. And oh, it's drinks because it's Christmas or whatever holidays it is. And sometimes spirits are a bit high and your chem the chemistry is high and because with the devil, the chemistry is always high. You know, this is, if it's a relationship, there's always some sort of addictive codependent sexual element knocking around you'll know about that now this is somebody if it's a relationship five of cups you can see here this is the conjugal couch okay it's the conjugal couch and he's fleed the conjugal couch and she's chasing so there has been some fleeing of the conjugal couch in the past and this is the string that can be pulled. So for some of you, it's someone you're not with anymore. Now, Nine of Pentacles, the single happy person card. For some of you, during Mercury retrograde, 3rd of December to the 22nd, but quite honestly, you can read it for the whole of December in my book. You may have reached a point, Taurus, where you finally feel happy in the garden, okay? This is a self-sufficiency card. You finally got over somebody. You finally got to the point where you feel okay. And whoever this person is, possibly a Capricorn, because the devil is the Capricorn card, but that person goes, mm -mm. I sniff someone who's over me. Time to send a text. Time to drop by. Time to pop up on direct message on Facebook, whatever, Snapchat, book chat, face chat, face bop, whatever it is, okay? They kind of put their head above the parapet in a just checking you're not over me kind of a way. Okay, you've got such a lot going for you here, Taurus. You have a soft spot for this person or thing, whatever it is. We've got this Queen of Cups in reverse. Queen of Cups is very in touch with her feelings. That's why her feet here merge into the water. Also, Cher from about 1989. What do you reckon? Yeah? I'm thinking believe with that voice fade, I think. In reverse, though, Queen of Cups. Not listening to feeling it in your water. You know, when people say, oh, I can feel it in my water. You really can. It's not so much your water, it's more your kind of chakras, really. But you can feel it. You can feel when something's off, Taurus. 
Now, Mercury Retrograde is going to kind of throw a bit of a spanner in that works. And you're going to be a bit all over the place on this. You're going to have your weak moments. And Christmas, holidays, all that stuff is a time of weak moments usually. You know, we're bored sometimes, sick of Christmas, socialising more than normal, or not socialising and feeling that we should be, feeling sorry for ourselves, feeling a bit single, all that stuff. In other words, feelings are turned up to 11 when it's the holiday time. Just be careful. Just be careful. There's a reason for all those spilt cups. Somebody quit the conjugal couch, okay? And again, an Aries got this in exactly the same position. So if you have any Aries in your chart, Taurus, listen to their video. It's incredibly similar. Knight of Swords in reverse. For some of you, it could be an air sign. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, certainly. Five of Swords is Venus in Aquarius. Knight of Swords, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. In the reverse, again, a lack of clarity. Lack of clarity, Taurus. Somebody may capitalise on loopholes or wobbly feelings or this. You know, it's like giving up smoking or giving up any addiction, people or substances. It always comes a point where you try and kid yourself. You don't deliberately do it. Like with smoking, say, you get to magic three weeks or magic three months and you say to yourself, God, that was really easy. Now I know I'm not dependent on it. It's okay to do it recreationally. So I'll just have one or two and I can be that person who only smokes when they drink. And then you get smashed and have one or two and buy a packet of 20 and next thing you know you're smoking again. It's that kind of denial mentality involved with the devil. Now, the big focus as well for you, Taurus, is business and money is very successful looking. So don't be afraid to put your time and effort and resources into that. If you want to start your own business, and I would say leave it till January, for God's sake, with Mercury Retrograde, it looks great. Two of Wands, Three of Wands, boom, Nine of Pentacles, Soul Trader, yes, go for it. Also, if you want promotion, job opportunities to push to the top of the pile, like it very much. If you're in a relationship that's good and steady, I can see it moving to another level, Two of Wands, Three of Wands, that's nice. If you know who you are and there's just a few of you who are to do with this devil card, five of cups, five of swords, then let that person pull your string. You also get the full card in reverse, Major Arcana. I like this card actually because with the energy we've got going on at the moment and Mercury retrograde in December, it's probably not the time to be leaping off the cliff. You know, the energy that's required to leap off the cliff and be caught in the fall is a teenage immortality and that's not the kind of energy you're going to have while Mercury's retrograde. January is when you make a move. January. Now then, what are we going to have for you? I'm going to have a Chuck Spezzano Enlightenment card for Taurus. We might do a couple of clarifiers on these. I'm just really interested. That card's screaming out to me. Good. You get the Expectations card. I like this. This is just a call for you, especially if you're thinking, as we all do, we come up to New Year and we have a bit of a ready reckoner of where, we are, where we're at, where we've been, where we're going. And if you have expectations, they're a bit whole. As in, if you don't meet your expectations, you tend to dismiss yourself as a whole person and throw yourself on the scrap heap. If you have goals, you can think of them as these flags. And flags can be moved and adjusted so that you can still achieve, even if it's a small amount, a baby step, whatever it is, and feel good, which is more important than having a great big expectation, usually of yourself. That's too much pressure. 
love cards nope clarifiers with mercury being retrograde <laughs> i'm a very indecisive piscean actually my readings get better when mercury's retrograde because i can go into that slightly weird place but things like times and dates and decisions that one oh you oh taurus that's interesting oh yeah i'm just trying to pick up on a bit of a story here wow that's so interesting okay <laughs> you got the cards you had before but in reverse i need one more and it's you Okay, some of you were dealing with a fire sign. Sagittarius, Leo, Aries. This is just someone pulling the rug from you. For the strength card in reverse, we've got the ace of wands in reverse. Something, it's like a firework going like that. Something started hot and heavy and then crashed and burned. For the five of swords, which is someone having power over you that we talked about, power games, you get that lovely nine of pentacles in the reverse. You see, this is when you're feeling good and you're over somebody, they want to get you back like that because of the five of swords. They want to lord it over you so that you become like that. Not happy in your own garden, not self-sufficient, but dependent on them. It's a codependency. For the fool... In reverse you get the two of wands in reverse right next to the two of wands in the upright there's been some flip-flopping about this person they can make your world go like that fairly easily they only have to say one or two things or drop a couple of texts your way and the whole axis will shift do what you need to do to protect yourself Taurus Three of Wands, we get the King of Wands in reverse. And again, here, where Jason claims the crown back, the King doesn't want to give it up. That's power again. And for the Five of Cups, somebody fleeing the conjugal bed, Taurus. The Hierophant in reverse, and that's you. Taurus in reverse. World upside down. And the Devil, Four of Wands in reverse. Security taken away rug pulled feeling pretty angry with this person taurus i hope you're feeling angry with them too let's get some love cards out for taurus now taurus i don't know if december would be the ideal time <laughs> you know relationships that start during Mercury retrograde are often a bit stoppy starty or a bit weird in some way but it is a great time to flirt yeah that's nice mm. that's interesting too I knew you were going to get that card <laughs> okay Taurus flirt in December I have a feeling 2018, probably nearer the time of your birthday, will be more successful for actual relationships. But happiness is promised. This is a lovely, lovely, lovely card. I don't feel it's in December though. I feel those of you with this person who fled the conjugal couch, the devil card, that's your reward, okay? And then we get the neediness card. And I feel this works both ways with you and this person. They need you to have power over you. And you sometimes need them to have power over you. That's the Stockholm Syndrome. You need to break that cycle. Because actually you're doing really well, Taurus. Especially in money, finances, job and business. But also in independence. And then you get come hither. Come Hither is a card that just lets you know that during December you're going to be quite magnetically attractive. It's, um, you can see there's kind of, 
a woman like this, you know, with a big bush card, and then this guy's going woo like that. It's a good time to flirt, it's a good time to get out there, it's a good time to lay pipe, as they say, for 2018. Don't take anyone or anything too seriously that you meet. If they're worth it, make them wait. They can still be there in 2018 when Mercury goes the right way. Just don't do anything too soon, but know that you are attractive. You've got a certain magnetism going on, Taurus. And I also get as well that for money and business, you could attract that the same way, which is quite a weird thing to say. Jesus, that's really strange. Taurus, you get, and I shuffled them really well, you also get the same oracle card as Aries, the Unfinished Symphony. Now, some of you, of course, could be involved with the Aries because they got the Devil, the Knight of Swords reversed, and the Five of Swords reversed, and the Unfinished Symphony. And it's the same message I gave to Aries you may want closure with somebody or something. You may have to come to terms that pursuing closure keeps that person in your life. Giving up on the idea of closure sets you free. You also get come to the edge. The whole of December is you working your way to that ledge and then getting yourself into a mind space where you're comfortable enough to take the leap. And I feel 2018, that is the time. December is almost a month of revision for you. Ooh, yes. Lovely, actually. You get healing. And one of my very, very favorite people, Archangel Michael. What you can't resolve, chuck it up to Archangel Michael in whichever way you want. Say it, write it, sing it, dream it, just pass it over to him. You'd be surprised how things get solved, especially things that tax you so much that you've reached your limit with them, Taurus. And then healing is taking place. This is fabulous. You deserve this. Taurus, if you do want a private reading or for 2018 or you want to buy one for a friend for Christmas, you can do that in the description box. Check out your weekly reading this week as well. It's up on the channel. And check out my daily readings too. I do readings every single day. Okay, thank you Taurus. Namaste.